It's Sunday morning in America, and in two days, we have the biggest election of our lifetime. Uh, with us this morning is uh, Pat Buchanan to give us his opinion of what he thinks is going on. Good morning, Mr. Buchanan. How are you this morning? Delighted to talk with you, John. Tell us, give us the pulse, the way you see things. You have a lot of common sense and uh, and uh, uh, a good opinion. Tell us where you think uh, Republicans, Democrats, uh, where do you think our country lies? Well, I think our country is headed really for an election which is, uh, which is going to set the course of the nation for a long time to come, given the dramatic differences in the agendas of the two national candidates. And I think where the election sits right now is that, that Trump is closing and he is gaining, but the question is whether he has sufficient momentum to take him over the top on Tuesday. I think he does have a path to victory, but I think the odds uh, makers, the odds makers in, in Vegas, John, are still betting on Hillary Rodham Clinton. Well, a lot of people have seen Trump uh, uh, up and down and uh, up sometimes on popular vote. But I haven't seen a scenario uh, where he could win on electoral votes. Do you have any opinion on that one? Yes, I do. I think what he's got to do, he's got to just win the three crucial states in the Republican base, and that's Ohio, North Carolina, Florida. Then if he picks up Iowa and Nevada, I think he is in, and gets the normal Republican states. I think he's within reach of victory. And I think there's a possibility he could do well in Colorado, which is surprising. As of Friday, I saw a poll that said he was tied in Michigan. There are polls showing him tied or even slightly ahead in New Hampshire, which might do it. It is, it is very narrow. It is very tight. I don't know if you played bridge, John, when you were younger, but my parents used to. And what he's going to have to execute is what's called a small slam, get all of the tricks in but one. Well, you know, I think there's a lot of angry people in America, and uh, I think we're going to find out who's more angry at what. I mean, uh, uh, I've heard Democrats saying, uh, uh, Trump, I'll never vote for him. And I've heard uh, other ones say that I'll never vote for Hillary. So it seems like it's not who's going to win, but who's going to lose more. Well, I think... You're touching on a very important point. At the Trump rallies, there's a regular chant is, lock her up. And then you see Hillary Rodham Clinton, when she's speaking to her fundraising group, said that, uh, you know, the Trump voters, uh, half of them are, you know, a, a basket of deplorables, racist, sexist, homophobes, xenophobes, uh, Islamophobes, and all the rest. And so I think there's a real, within the various coalitions, and frankly, Americans, John, are, are very bitterly divided and uh, as split as they've ever been. I remember when I came into politics with Richard Nixon, the Vietnam War was really tearing the country apart and there were massive demonstrations. But culturally and socially, we still seem to be pretty much one nation. And I'm not sure we are still. I, I think you're 100% right, and uh, uh, we're going to need a lot of people to bring our country together no matter who wins. How about the Senate? Do you have any good gut feeling on the Senate? On the Senate, I think that that's pretty contingent, I think, on the, uh, on the general election. If Trump's within a couple of points, I think the uh, – or certainly if he wins – if Trump wins, the Republicans hold the Senate – and I think the, the Senate may be touch and go. But again, I've seen closure in, uh, in some states where Republicans seem to be slipping backwards, and now they're coming forward. I, I think the Senate, holding the Senate, is 50-50 as of right now, John, for what the else? Republicans. Yeah. Uh, well, we talked about the Senate. We talked about presidential. What else would you like to tell the American public on a Sunday morning? They're all sitting around the table. They're having their hot cup of coffee. Um, and Let me tell you a story, John. Tell me. On Sunday mornings, and now we're taping this right now just before Sunday morning, but on Sunday mornings I listen to John the Cat's Round Table on the way home from church where I go to the traditional Latin mass down in, deep in Washington, D.C. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. We got you over there, right on there when I come out at 10 o'clock. <laughs> but what should, pe- what should people say? You know, it's, it's, it, it's a, you know, to, to bring the country together, you know, I'm, I'm very much, to be quite candid, I'm sort of a historical pessimist. And I think the trend lines, despite our wealth and the, with the successes we've had winning the Cold War, it is, it is hard to say that this is a, a better or happier place, this country, than it was, say, in, in the days of Reagan or the days of Eisenhower and John F. Kennedy, and at other times in our history because of the, the tremendous acrimony and the divisions and the, if you will, the balkanization socially and culturally of the American people because of that cultural war I talked about, that's enduring and continuing. And uh, there's no doubt about it, traditionalists like me have, have been in something of a retreat. It's not only the Republicans and Democrats fighting each other. You've got internal disputes in the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. I mean, who's going to bring... As parties, who's going to bring them together? That's the other big item. Well, the um, if Trump wins on Tuesday, I think, and I have thought since Trump broke through and won the nomination, that bringing the Republican Party together, and I was with Nixon when he really did it after the Goldwater, tremendous Goldwater divisions in the party, he succeeded, and there's no reason why the Republicans can't get together if Trump wins. I mean, there is a common agenda there. We all want justices like Antonin Scalia the Great. I mean, we all want to control spending. We all would like to reduce taxes. We have different places to reduce it. We all feel that business is too heavily regulated, and we ought to free up private enterprise. We all want a strong national defense. And even on the issues where the the free traders disagree with Trump, he's won that argument. And I think if he imposed, say, a 20 percent tariff on manufactured goods and told the Republicans all this revenue, uh, hundreds of billions of dollars, is going to be used for tax reduction on small and medium-sized businesses, I think you could work something out. But the problem, John, I see is the, the 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 personal differences And a lot of them dating to some pretty rough primaries where people were called names and uh, and uh, it was very very bad. But I think they could the country can come together over the Republican Party can unite over a number of things. And I think if Hillary wins, she's going to move to the left, and the cup of the country will not be united because the Republicans will really go into the to stall off the, the the defense. Pat Buchanan, thank you for calling in this Sunday morning and. And thank you for being with us. And uh, we all pray for America, and we pray for good outcomes. Sure do, John. Thanks, and thanks for inviting me. Take it easy. Take care.